Oh, okay. I don't usually. Welcome. All right. So <laughs> this I like to call the triple cake class. So I'm Melissa Mose. If you didn't already know, I own Melissa Simply Sweet. And so today we're going to do the triple cake. So we're going to go over a drip cake, an ombre cake, and the rosette cake. And it's kind of, and then I honestly didn't even stack my cake or ice it or anything. So we can just do it all from the start, like start to finish. As always, if you have any questions, stop me anytime. Do not fret. You can also write in the little chat next to you if you don't want to speak your question because you feel like I'm like da, 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 and you don't want to stop me. You can always write it there and I'll peek down and see it and answer whatever you've got. Okay, so here's the deal. I had a cake in the freezer that canceled and it was a quarter sheet cake. So I cut it to make it like a cube which I was pretty impressed with myself for that right there because that was pretty impressive. So um, I felt like this was just, uh, why well, make a cake? My, my people do not eat any more cake. So, all right. So before we start, I'm going to take it here because we're going to, we have to start with our, um, doing our ganache for our drip cake. So for the drip cake, let me lift you a bit. Um, I do, as you always know, I love Calibo chocolate. So I do the dark chocolate for the drip. You can absolutely do milk. You can do white. You can do um, wafers. You can do anything. I mean, the ratios are all different. I haven't even tried. There is a water technique for dairy-free. Well, it wouldn't be fully dairy-free because it'd be like 100% shelf stable. Um, so this recipe is just six ounces of chocolate, chopped like really kind of small pieces and four ounces of cream. So it's kind of like a two to one ratio. You can eyeball it. It's really not like you have to be perfect science with this. So to do it, I just heat up the cream in my pot. Um, you can absolutely microwave it. You do not have to have it um, on a stove top. I just don't have a microwave in my baking kitchen. So we will do that. And then once we do that, we just pour the cream over, let it hang out and let it sit for a bit and then mix it up and then we'll go to dripping it. For drips, you can do with a spoon, you can do in a squeeze bottle and you can do in a piping bag. I'll be honest, I do a piping bag, main reason, I don't wanna clean a squirt bottle. That is really the only reason why. Um, but they all work and they work perfectly. So. I'm going to just put this to the side only because I wanted to get the cream going because we have to let it sit and rest and get like to a normal temperature and that will do that while we're setting up our cake. All right, so let's come over here. Let me move my margarita. All right, for the cake, um, it's just, I mean, it's just the normal cake. So you can do this with a round cake. You can do this with um, any cake you want. I only, re only reason why I picked this cake was because, oh, why am I, maybe my problem is because I have you sideways. The only reason why I did the square was because of what I had. So I just, honestly, I literally just cut it and then I um, just like, re it's like frozen, frozen. So, I mean, as you can see, also, it's kind of thin enough and it's for my family. So, <laughs> so I'm not going to, I don't need to um, toward it or take the edges off of it or anything like that because there's really honestly like no need for it. So when you're stacking a cake, which I know you guys do, or maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I don't know. I feel like everybody always gets really nifty ideas. You can put something under this. A lot of times I'll put a dollop, but because this was tacky and I'm not really traveling with it, I won't. But you can put a dollop of icing. This is just vanilla cake. Nothing super, super fancy or exciting. Um, it was honestly, I honestly don't even laugh. It was like the health department passed this energy bill and they were celebrating. So this is Swiss meringue that I just made. Um, you can use any, of course, any icing you want to use. I mean, it doesn't really make a difference. It's totally your own preference. 
I will say the rosette cake, unfortunately, takes like a ton of icing. It's ridiculous, I'll be honest. I don't know why it has to take so much, but it does. <laughs> it's like an icing summer. So here's how I stack a cake, and I'll just kind of have it like focus on the cake. So here's how I stack the cake. I literally just take a dollop of icing, offset spatula. I like this size because it fits good in my hand, and I just smear it around. Now, because I was making this for my family, and I'll be honest, they really wanted red velvet, and I wasn't going to make it. So I said, forget it. Um, I, I'm gonna jazz it up. I had leftover Hall um, Valentine candy. So I cut up Twix bars and I just thought it was fun. Of course, this has nothing to do with what we're doing, but I figured I would just make people in my house a little bit happy with me. <laughs> okay, so like I, you can put anything in cakes. I mean, um, cakes are like an avenue. So you see how this side, is a little bit thinner and this side's a little bit thicker. Do not stress people. We just kind of flip it around. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Oh look, this side's a little bit thicker and this side's a little thinner. Ta-da. Oh wait. There you go. Stick it there. All right. Let me rinse my hand off. Okay. And then I'll just keep going up a handful of layers. I we don't need to use all this cake. I just I have it. If anyone has any questions about this, I know we're not even to the area yet, but I put on the thing that we could talk about icing the cake only because I always, no matter who I watch do a lesson, I always learn stuff. You know, someone has different tricks than me or does something and I'm always like, oh, hey, that's really great. I've never even thought of that. So, all right, so this layer, I'm all fancy. I'm going to make it Kit Kat. I think they're going to be pretty excited with this. No, I've never done it before. So hopefully they're not like, ah, oh. but I think they'll be happy. All right. And then we'll put, we'll put a cake on. We'll, we'll find a good piece. Okay. All right. Ta-da. Okay. So normally I would, um, well, normally I just do this. Okay. I don't really do anything special. All right. I don't wait. I know some people wait. I don't wait. This is totally going to be harder to do because I put goodies in the middle. But you know what? I'm up for a challenge. All right. So I will go around and I will smooth out any icing that is poked its hole out. There are many people that go and they take piping bags and they squirt the icing all the way around. You 100% can totally do that. There's nothing wrong with it. The only reason why I don't do it is because A, I feel oh, like it dirties um, a bag. B, I'm, you know me, I'm lazy. All right, look, so I wasn't even watching. We're gonna just pour our, I heard it, our um, cream over the chocolate and just let it sit. Okay. All right. So I like to put my icing on top and then just kind of pull from it and bring it down. And I always do a crumb coat no matter what cake I'm doing. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I usually always do a crumb coat and then I will add more. Okay. Melissa. Yes. Do you have your ganache um, sitting on anything or just the side? No, it's just, it's, it's just sitting over there. It's not on anything. Cause I want it to keep, I want it to cool down. I don't want it to keep, to stay hot. So I just have it on, just on the stove top, just sitting. But because my marble can't have heat, I can't put it on my counter. So behind me is soapstone and that can take heat like granite. So that's the only reason why it's not next to me. But it will when she gets all nice and cool. Okay. All right. So you're just going to go down. And I know square cakes are like super intimidating because you've got edges. 
Who I think, and I think square takes way, square cakes take way longer than a round cake because I don't feel like we do them as, I personally don't do them as often and that. So, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna just crumb coat this and then we're gonna do all the different designs on it. But with like rosettes, you have to have a base for your rosette to hook to. So if you've ever made a rosette and it's kind of, it was on and it went boop, boop, it's because, and you didn't put like, a, you just went with it and you're like, oh, screw it, I'm gonna just rosette right here. If you don't have a layer of icing, it has nothing for the buttercream to attach to and it will fall off. So I don't know if anyone has had a rosette catastrophe, but yes. And then we'll do the ombre and, and then we'll do, we'll do the ombre, then we'll drip over that and then we'll do rosettes. It'll be like you, and then if you were doing this, I don't know if anyone's doing it with me. I've kind of come to find out everyone does it. <laughs> so, so, but if you were doing it with me, um, you could do it on a round cake. You could, you can, you know, put it in triangles, you know, part of it, this part of it, that, you know, whatever you want to do. It's cake. You gotta just be fun with it. <laughs> All right. So remember, because we're gonna go over this with all of our different patterns, and because this is just a crumb coat, we're not looking for it to be covered perfectly. At all. And I would honestly tell you, putting candy in it on a square cake, a little rough. So don't judge this little wonkiness coming. But you see how it's like wonky here? That's the side my rosettes are gonna go on. <laughs> because rosettes hide a multitude of sins. It's like putting a bow on something. All right, so I feel good about the situation I've got. I feel good. I have a little thing to share about the rosettes. Share away, So Courtney. it was like, the second cake I'd ever decorated my first rosettes and I did everything right but I was doing it at a class so at a lady's house about 30 minutes away and it was probably 85 degrees outside and I had my AC on full blast but we didn't have time after the class to chill it so of course by the time I got home it was all kind of sagged down to the bottom looking really sad so definitely chill it before you let a customer transport it. Well I would totally recommend I'm going to pop this in the freezer for a second um, I, yeah, I would recommend, no matter what cake I do, if it is, um, no matter what it is, even if it is literally a chocolate chip cookie cake that I'm writing on, I will chill everything because I feel like the one moment your buttercream goes on, it should just chill right up and, and then you can firm it up without a problem. And I feel like with the moment you don't, it's like issues and you should, I, I'm a firm believer of always traveling with cold cake. Cold cake can like take a multitude of sins, I will say. All right, so you can see in here. Um, let's get a spatula and we will mix our chocolate and our cream. I know Sugar Geek does a water-based recipe and I've heard phenomenal things from it, especially if you want to do like metallic gold or you want to do like really bright colors and stuff like that and you walk away from and then you don't want the cream in it so you know it can sit out indefinitely. I haven't tried it yet. Shockingly, I do not get a ton of drip cake orders. Do you guys get a ton of drip cakes? No. All right, I do not. Okay, so you see how we kind of have a couple of chunks in here? This does not stress me out. This would stress out people sometimes and then they would be like, oh my God, I need to cook it. We're gonna, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to gently put it, I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna just put it on the exact pot that I steam the milk on because it has really maintained enough heat 
it will very gently, gently warm it. I'm not putting any heat on it or anything because I feel like if I add any more heat, um, we're gonna burn our chocolate and then our chocolate's gonna seize up, our chocolate's gonna be grainy. That ain't good. All right, here's what we should do now. Let's talk about our buttercream for our rosettes and for our um, ombre. Okay, so of course you know, I chose purple, big shocker, big huge shocker. Okay, so I will, the way that I like to do ombre, unless I'm doing like a buttercream wave, if I'm doing a buttercream wave around the cake, I will start at the top of the cake and go to the bottom. So that would mean that I would start at the white or the lightest color and I'd go darker. If I'm gonna do like a straight ombre and just kind of like wipe the icing on in like an ombre pattern, I will make my darkest color so that I have the correct shade. And then I will continue to add white to it as I, as I finish up. So this way um, I'm just lightening the shade versus getting like the wrong tones, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's begin. All right, so I will start with this amount. I never have enough icing, but I'll start with that. Okay, so I will just, I do love Americolor. They're like one of my favorites. This is, the best purple they came out with. This purple does not turn blue, which the royal purple is horrific. I don't know why, they, it's just so bad. So I will squirt this lilac in. I just find purple in general is such a hard color. And a lot of times um, you, you have to mix more than one color to get like a really good, good purple. Lisa, what's the name of the purple? This purple is lilac. Thanks. Yes, anytime. I know, I love it. It's like, look how pretty. Okay, so I know people have so many issues dyeing um, using colors, and especially for like Swiss meringue, they, they'll add color and then it'll get like that watery graininess. Um, I think that that just happens when you add too much. But see, you see, it's just not even dark enough. Like, all right, we'll have to add another color. <laughs> because that color is going to take us a year and a half to get to. Um, all right, let's add blood pink. Okay. So this is just deep pink. We're, it's, we'll see what it ends up coming out to be. But I just know the way this is going, we'll end up being here like forever to get that really pinky purple. So this will go more pinky purple. Oh man, it is, it's still really pretty. But you see, it, it looks muddy in, in the photos. Okay. I don't doing it long enough that I can sit and judge like like for example when I did this cookie today it was not like dark red like it is now it was close and I knew as it sat it'll get there but that just kind of comes with time with really understanding the colors and things like that to understand like where it's going to go And if your icing isn't perfectly tight, especially talking about Swiss meringue, you can break it really, really easily by adding too much stuff. Oh, and I, and I speak from complete experience. Like I have done that many a time. All right, I think this is a good enough darker color to start with. So we'll start with this. And then because I have a tendency to either always under dye colors or over dye, I'm not gonna make all the other colors right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cake out of the fridge and I'm gonna go and do my first layer and pipe on my ombre. And then once that's piped on, then I'll add my white. 
and then I'll pipe on my next layer of ombre. And then when that's done, I'll do that. But I'll merge it into separate bowls when I need to go back. If that makes sense. I don't know. I feel like I also don't get a lot of ombre cakes either. But I do get buttercream wave ombre. Like, not flat. Like, they want the texture to it. So those I do quite a bit. But, like, the solid just, no, nah, not so much. All right. Okay. Oh, the cake. I was going to the cake. All right. Okay. So we have her. She's cold. See? No icy comes off. Don't do that to a customer's cake. They don't like it. All right. <laughs> um, I will fill a piping bag. And I will squirt on that easting. Uh, I'll do it like, let's like be fine. Like I never like to do what I'm supposed to do. So let's do this. Let's do the ombre flat. Then after we do the ombre, let's go back and I'm gonna show you the buttercream waves that I do when I do the textured ombre. We got four corners here. Let's mix it up, people. We will mix it up. But let's come back and we'll check our chocolate. She's doing good. Okay. All right. So I, I do everything with tipless bags. I will use a tip when we do the rosettes. But if you're new to a tipless bag, you have a seam that runs up the middle and you just want to push down your buttercream or whatever your icing is inside, pull it to the edge and then cut straight on the tip. Okay. So I'm a lefty. So, hmm. Well, don't judge me how this goes on so you can see it go from this side to this side. Okay, ta-da, okay. Then I'm gonna squirt this back in the bowl. And because I am just that lazy, I will reuse the same type of bag. It's all the same color, remember, it's just different shapes. But because I'm gonna do two different techniques for you, I will separate and have separate bowls so this way I can still have this exact color. I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep stealing. And then, there we go. So that's all I did. There is no rhyme or reason or method of exact ratios. Basically, all you're looking for is, is the color lighter than the previous color I have put on? If it is, bingo, you've got it. So it is lighter, so I go like this. Woohoo! All right, I will add a touch more. Melissa. Yes. We have a question. Do you want me to read it to you or can you see it? Oh, do you have a good buttercream recipe? I do have a good buttercream recipe, and I never, ever, ever give it out, but I will give it out to you. So I can say it to you, but I can I'll tell it to you now, and then I will also put it in this group because I never I know it's like your butter there's certain things I don't never the only thing that I actually will never give out is my chocolate chip cookie recipe because I, that little girl took like two years to perfect that recipe but I, I'll give it to you and so basically all my recipe is is um 289 grams of egg white 623 grams of granulated sugar, and um, five sticks of butter, and uh, two tablespoons of vanilla. All right, so I'm going to squirt that. And then I put most of it back in here, and then I'm gonna put the rest in here, because this one is really gonna just be barely anything and white. 
Melissa, will you use the same one for your rosettes or do you prefer yeah. everything for your rosettes? The same, but I use this, this is my Swiss meringue buttercream. I use it for everything. I use it, you, if I'm going to make icing and do any cake, it is 99.9% .9 buttercream. Are you I familiar with crusting? Huh? Are you familiar with crusting buttercreams? Because yeah, I have a, which is I like an American and I, I don't do them. I, wa I left them a long time ago. Do you have to have the, like, can you just have butter for it to be crusting or do you have to have the, um, the shortening to make it crusting? What makes a crusting a crusting? Well, first of all, the crusting uses confectioner sugar. So it oh. uses a totally different sugar and you're not, and you're not using, and you're not using egg whites. So there's no cooking. At, so that whole section is gone. So all, so you're either a solid butter confectioner sugar American or you're like the Wilton recipe which is part Crisco part butter and powdered sugar and I used to do that when I started that's what I started with and then as I switched over and I had my and I started my business back um, in 2010 I decided you know what I felt like it was just really really sweet and it wasn't an elevated level that I personally wanted. I wanted that really light, airy feeling. And I tried Swiss meringue one time and fell in love with it. And I never went back. And I kind of, and it also bothered me that when you go to rinse out your bowl of buttercream with the Crisco, like you really can't get it down the garbage disposal. And then I thought, well, that's probably what my stomach looks like. <laughs> so for me, I walked away. But I know in Colorado, Karen says, and I know that, that there are certain cottage, you know, places that you can't use Swiss meringue at all, even though it's a cooked egg and sugar, they do not let you. Virginia, I know you can because I, I started off cottage and then went licensed. Um, so she actually uses recipes and test, yeah, ex yeah. It, yeah, and that's what you have to do. And you have to, but here's the thing. Don't let that stop you from making the buttercream for your family and friends to do something different. So just because you can't sell it, I always feel like everyone's like, I'm not even going to try it because I can't sell it. But you got to eat some cake sometimes. And so I would always say like, you never, even if you can't sell it, you might love it just for family. But... I, I, I love it. Uh, but as you see, like, it doesn't go anywhere. Like, you saw I put that cookie cake on with the flowers. That's all Swiss meringue. So, I never, I've never had any issues with it. I will say, I think it, um, I have to make it super, super, super tight for the, um, those Korean flower tips. That one, you have to make sure that you are, like, this is a, this came out really, really tight. But also, you have to make sure that you don't, like, over whip it, because um, when you put, too, see how solid it is? If you whip it too much, you'll get, like, air pockets in it, and then you'll never get it smooth. So, that one, yeah, I learned that one, too. But that was all trial and error along the way. Um, okay. All right, so then I will just, and I have now come to notice as I'm standing here, I wouldn't say that this is, I don't even know if you can see it as well on the TV, on, on the TV, on the TV. If you can see it as well as I do in person, I have no idea. Okay, so I'm throwing stuff. I do love my handy dandy little guy. And then I also have these little handy dandy Doodads. This one's actually from CakeSafe. Um, hers is plexiglass or theirs, whatever. And it has this tiny, there it is, a tiny little slant. I really like them. I have the metal ones also that have, you know, all the nifty little designs. And those are great. The key for those working and the key for this working and all of that is you have to just keep chilling your cake. And you have to make sure that like, if you wanted to do like the nifty design that it has like the cutout and then you come back and you do the other color, totally not hard, it's time consuming. And you just need to make sure that you go back to the freezer constantly with your cake or else you start pulling up your other icing. Okay, all right. So 
again, come people, let me take you on this side. It only took me this long to realize it. Okay, there you go, Melissa, now you can see. Yeah. Quick question, you yeah. said you get more tight. Are you talking about stiffer meringue or what do you mean by make it more tight? Um, when you're mixing your, your meringue, you, you'll see, or you're mixing your buttercream, you'll see that um, it's like loose. Like, you know, when it's starting to go and it's soupy, and then it starts to puff up. I always call it like the magical puff. You can tell when it's loose, it's like falling up. Like if I go and I take my spoon um, of buttercream, if my buttercream was loose, if I went like that, it would hit the floor. But because it's tight and it's whipped, whipped, or I don't know, I, I don't know why we call it tight, but it's tight and it's, it's holding together, it does the Dairy Queen twist, you know? Wouldn't it be funny if it just hit the floor? It would be, but that's what happens. And see, you can shake it off, but if it was loose, it would be sloppy and falling down. So sometimes people are like, my Swiss meringue is not firm enough and it's not holding shape. You haven't mixed it enough or it's too hot or it's never, it's too cold. So if it's really cold, like, cause you can always reconstitute it. So. If I don't use all of this, it will go in the fridge or it could go in the freezer, depending if I need like a day waiting or if I need like four days or three days will be if I'm going to, I usually make my icing though. Like, let's say I had this class today and it's Sunday and let's say I have an order for Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll put my icing in the fridge and then I will take my icing back out. Again, again, I mean, like, you know, I'm so lazy. I will go over to the stove and I will put my bowl over the heat and I will just kind of rotate it enough so that you will start to see that it starts melting on the inside. Because the key is, the other way you could do, which is the way I used to do it when I wasn't as lazy, is I would take some icing out, put it in a microwavable bowl, microwave that until it was soup, mix that back in here, the cold of here and the soup of the buttercream would whip right back up and it would do the same thing like it does with chocolate, you know, and it'll reconstitute it. You can also take your metal bowl and sit it over a flame, not too close, but enough that you're just gently heating it, take it to the mixer and mix. If it's not there yet and you still see it's like granulely and it's soupy, it's not there yet. Take it back, do it again. And then if you get to the point where it looks like straight up liquid soup, you went too far. You didn't hurt it. You just need to take it to let it sit in the fridge and cool down to a better temperature. This is all like trial and error and practice, but you can manipulate it pretty far and you can screw around with it. Like you can go really hot, you can go really cold. The only time you can't mess with it is when you're really cooking the eggs and the sugar. Because again, if you heat it too much, you have scrambled eggs. So that's the part that you can't mess with it as much. But once it's been emulsified in with the butter and everything, you can push the boundaries of it. Did that help? Yes, no, okay. All right, so back to this little thingamajigger. Um, so you can go and you can take your, this is really hard because I am a lefty, but you can go and you can swipe across it with this thing. And then you can also, it's clear, it's clear. So you can also pull, this helps because it's clear so you can see it, but you can pull and you pull it across. You wanna wipe it off in between pulls. And as you get closer down to the point where you really wanna make it smooth, smooth, I usually will heat it in, um, I'll put it under, oh, but you can see the different, oh, look how cute. Okay, let me heat it. And all I do is I just run it under hot water. And then, because the key is, remember, it's butter. So if you have hot water, hot water is gonna melt butter. And then, yeah, but, Okay, and then wipe it off because again, you don't want, you don't want um, water on your icing. Look at that, see, 
cute. Isn't it cute? It is cute. It really is. I know. It really is. I'm happy that you can see the color because I was getting a little concerned. It is hard for me because I go, I, I am a person that goes this way, but um, just so you can get like the full edge. Okay. So does everyone understand that? Was that kind of helpful enough? Any questions on this? And as you see, I made it the even amount. I did three squirts on each row, so then it's even. You can mess with it also. Like you could do a design, like a wave design, pull your knife through it and do whatever. Yeah? Good. Okay. All right, let me check on. Well, we'll definitely have to do something with this edge because this I, edge is just kind of heavy. I really liked how you started dark and then went lighter and lighter. Um, Cause I feel like the times that I've done it, I try to recreate what I've done only lighter. Right, and, the, and, and so if you go like when I um, go and I do like the waves where I have to start up here and work my way down, I will make my icing the same way I just did. I'll make it darker and have it in three bowls. So my three bowls have um, the light color, you know, and then they're, they're prepared. Um, and then you just know which one to go to. So it definitely makes it easier because the co-coloring thing can get into a bit of a problem. Well, this side we'll just go over with our, we'll just have our rosette wrap. But it is pretty damn cute. Okay. So let me show you the buttercream wave because I think it is super, super, super cute and it's really beachy. So I usually do it in um, like blues and stuff, but you know, we can do anything. Okay, so here's what you need for it. Come, you can go back over here because I don't mean to be like moving you around. Like, like, like I don't want to give you vertigo, but I decided to just have one camera tonight because I felt like it was easier and now I'm thinking maybe it wasn't a good idea. All right, so here's what we have. We have our three bowls of icing. So now we're going to have to actually um, do three piping bags because, well, actually no, we really aren't. We'll do one piping bag again. I am gonna show you how to reduce costs of one piping bag. <laughs> All right, I will have to use a tip. Let me figure out what tip it is I have to use. But I will use a tip and it will probably be um, like a 101, a one, I'm gonna use a 103, but hold on, let me get a coupler. So it'll be all fancy, fancy. Okay, so I still use <laughs> tipless bags with couplers. I don't, I just stopped buying the thicker bags. Um, because I just found like it was easier that if I had one type of bag, I knew I always had bags in stock versus if I was like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then I was like, oh crap, I only have bags for cakes. I don't have bags for um, uh, cookies. All right, so it's the same way you would do with your regular. I put it in here. I do a guesstimate. I guess it. I need to guess it again. I cut my edge off. I do, I do tend to um, let it sit literally right up here because it is a thinner bag and I feel like it locks in a little bit better with the tip. All right, so we're going to do one and because we're going to go start with the light and go to the dark, we don't have to worry about our bag um, um, being too dark as we get darker because we're already going from light to dark. Okay. I think we have enough icing for everything, but we'll see. Melissa? It's yes. Karen. I've yes. Got, do you have lavender streaks in your hair? Is it the lighting? I do. I was a little <laughs> bored and my hairdresser dropped off purple and I put purple in it. Yes. Okay. And I, my husband was like, are you putting purple all up? Because I had it like underneath that she did it. And I'm like, screw it. And then I was like, it's a lot of purple. 
And I was gonna do my whole head, and my husband was like, thank you for not, because I didn't want to roll over and see that in the morning. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. I figured, you know what? We're in quarantine and, and I'm not going I'm not going anywhere but with you guys. Okay. So I have to sit. I don't know about you, but um if I am going to decorate a cake or whatever, I do have to sit. It just kind of works better for me. But I'm gonna do this like kind of backwards for you because usually I would go left to right because I'm a lefty. So okay. So I will take the, this is a 103 because I couldn't find my 101, which I'm kind of like, that's fine, whatever. Um, I will take, and it's the same tip that you would make a, a rose out of, and I'll put the larger petals, the larger opening down. And you want to make sure that she pushes into the cake because you want to adhere it to the cake, you know? Um, if you're not pushing in and like making contact, your icing will have the Courtney, <clears throat> flop over. Okay. All right. And so I will do, um, whatchamacallit. And I just, you, you can just shake it and you go down. And so as you see, you want to, um, angle your top one out. So she kind of flows out. If you do it with a 101, you'll have a thinner, um, pedal, so to speak. So, you, so as you see, because we're layering downward, which is the reason why you have to um, start at the top, so you can angle downward. Um, and this makes a really cute like baby shower cake. I mean, it's like ruffles, you know what I mean? I don't know why I call them buttercream waves, but they're ruffles. Totally easier for me to go left to right. Okay, so oh, I'll do a little more because I'll use the guide on this side to go down to what we need. All right, so there you go. You can do this in fondant also, and it's super easy. Oh my gosh, it's super easy in fondant because in fondant, you're just cutting pieces, mm -hmm. you know, which is like hecka easy. All right, I'm gonna squirt this into, all right, I'll do, yeah, I'll squirt this into here into the medium color, and then I'll load the medium in, and then this will ombre down, which I just ripped my bag, so. Yay me. Okay. Let's see. Ugh. Um, I used to have those um, fabric bags, and I would have to take them out and clean them and then the whole kitchen was covered in all these standing bags and you see this right here getting the coupler out is the number one reason why i got rid of doing tips <laughs> because i hate that but i'll tell you like the best trick i ever learned is that you know those wilton really really thick bags um you can leave your coupler in them set them in your dishwasher down like this and run your dishwasher and you probably can have about 20 washes before your bag starts coming apart. Ta-da! Tip of the century. Oh. Let's Does anyone have any other questions while well, we're just sitting here? It doesn't even need to be about this. It could be about anything. All right. Yeah. You Never had... You had mentioned to do it in, that you could do it in fondant. I know you're doing a fondant class coming up. Maybe when we do that class, you could give us a little show. Oh, yeah, because in that, that, and that's super, super easy because in that, doing it, that's the same technique. You're cutting strips, and then you would take, to really do it like super, super pretty, you would take um, a ball roller, and then you would feather out one edge. So that you have that really nice little petal. I have air, and I know it's going to fart, and I hate when it farts. Melissa, so why don't you just do it from left to right? Okay, I'll do, uh, well then, oh yeah, then I'll bring you over here. Because if I do it from left to right, you won't see it. <laughs> All right, come here. Let's see. Oh, right. Nice. There you go. Okay. Oh, that's so much easier.
and you can, I have found sometimes if you have to raise it even higher, your cake, because you can't access it. Um, I have put it up on many of things. <laughs> but I think it's super, super sweet. And they're kind of, let's see. Let's get to, do you want me to do the last one or do you kind of got it? I'll do it. Well, I'll just finish it up in this. Only because that way I can save my, oh wait, let's, let's save our icing because I'm going to be like scraping this off um, because we have the rosette cake we have to do. All right. Okay, let's deal with our rosettes. So the rosette, super, super easy. Not anything to worry about. We're gonna do this rosettes over here. And all we're gonna do is you're gonna get a bag. I have, um, you can use a 2D, which is what I put on there. This is also an A24. It's like that opening is kind of what you're looking for. That's the one I like. But you can do rosettes with pretty much like a wide variety of things. And I like to think of rosette is really the opposite way you would ice a cupcake. Cause you know, when you ice a cupcake, you ice from the outside in to get your cone. Well, a rosette is just from the inside out. And then you're like, bam, I got it. So. Melissa. Yes. And Christy, do either one of you use Russian tips? Um, we have played with them, but um, I don't, I've never done it for an order. Oh, the Russian tip. I thought you said Russian. Oh, yeah. So the Russian tips, um, I have played with them as well. I was not a huge fan of them. Um, but I think we should, we'll, maybe we should play with them again. Have, do you have some? I have probably more than I could use in a lifetime. You, girl, you are right there with me. That's how I am. Commit and then realize, ooh, why did I do that? That's what I do. I go all in. So it looks like, this, it looks this like bag doesn't have, hmm? <laughs> what? Go ahead, Karen. This bag doesn't have a coupler, right? No, because it's the big one, I never use couplers with those big ones because they don't make, I don't, I don't, I never bought the big, I think I did back in the day have those like gigantic couplers, but I, I found it doesn't really matter. I find the smaller tips, if you don't use the coupler, I have more risk of it getting swallowed back up, but the big ones, I don't use it. All right, and then because I just think it's fun, I personally like when I add, um, when I have like my icing start changing colors. So yes, you would normally say like, oh girl, she's just lazy. But no, I actually do. I like, I like when it starts kind of going through and it'll turn from one color to the next. Okay. So the rosette, super easy. The key is, is that when I do them on the bottom, I like to go um, inside. Like, I like to make sure that it's tight and there's no holes, but let's see. Okay. So you just want to push it on top. See how cute she, oh. I, I don't know why I keep having this problem. Like, I shouldn't just leave you over here. Remind me of this, ladies, next week. To be like, just leave us on your left, Melissa. Just leave us on your left. Okay. And down. There she is. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So, I start in the middle, and I just curl it around. And I am making sure that I'm pushing in. 
so that I do it. Now this one, I will start in between. They are very cute. And then I will, like, if I had corners like this, I, I have no problem going on the corners. Because I think they're super, I mean, these are rosettes. They're like roses. But I feel like ros rosettes have, you can do so much with them. You can do little, go that way. You can do little baby ones. Say, ta-da, oh, here, we'll go over here. We'll rosette it. Oh, you see how when it starts changing? I love that. And then I like, me personally, I like to get my middle handled and then I like to, I like to go in later and fill it because I like the dimension of it. That's how I do it, especially remember this is a square cake. So in a round cake, you would be able to fill it easier. Let me put more ice in there. But you see, I mean, this was one whole batch. I mean, and this is not a big cake, but... Man, I'm telling you, rosettes, if I was making an eight inch cake doing this, I would make a double batch of icing because I feel like they just take so much icing. Okay, Melissa, I have a question. Yep. Do you know how to do the rosettes where you don't stop between rosettes and you just keep going so that you don't have all of the little breaks in between them? Do you know what I mean? Uh, okay, so... Let's I see. saw somebody do that fancy one time. I'm like, man, how do they do that? All right. Well, let's, well, let's, man, let's just try. I've never seen it, but I'll just imagine it. So I'm not stopping. Like that? Probably not. It probably was not like that. But I mean, then you don't have like the little you know, the little stop places that, I mean, that looks pretty darn good. For it looks pretty to me. Yeah, it's uh, well, awesome. Yeah, it, it, honestly, just pull when you're going around it, and it's really not, it's really not hard. You just try Melissa it Melissa can do anything. <laughs> no, honestly, Let's give her something hard. else. Oh, please, you people, just try it. It, it really was not hard. I'm only going to take this off because I forgot I'm supposed to, um, Hold this up so we can see up there. Well, I forgot I'm going to, I got to take this off because I forgot I'm supposed to have a drip come down. Yeah, but let, ah. us, see the, let us see the top because it's like washed oh, out. Okay. The light. I like those. They're like super uniform. Yeah, and I like. I like too, but I mean, you can wear They're really pretty. No, see, I like the color. To me, I like when there's mainly white with like a hint of color. That's me. Ta -da. On the side of the cake, then would you, would you, I don't know if you do this with rosettes or not. Would you put any small leaves in between? Um, I, I think it would be pretty. It'd be different. You know, the first person that made this, like, gosh, she hopes she's a billionaire because that was a good design, but uh, it would probably be really pretty. You should try it. If I had green, I would try it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, I forgot about my ganache. Please hold. <laughs> we forgot. Hold on. Let me figure this out. Okay. So our ganache is almost to the point where we could, um, you know, ice our cake in it. So I am going to put it in a double boiler just to reheat it. Uh, because right now it's like super thick. But that's no big deal. This won't take any time at all. Like I told you, I don't really do a whole lot of um, drips or not. People don't like, I don't know. They just don't want the drip cake. But we'll wait for the chocolate. Do we have any questions while we're waiting at all to discuss? Not even about this, any cake related, anything. Um, 
Ooh, but let me definitely tell you this. If you're ever going to do royal icing, make sure you don't put royal icing on. You can tell them what I did and why. <laughs> I, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I started just to say it and totally forgot you did it. But don't. You can yeah. always call me out. I'm a great, like, I totally, but I person. forgot it was you. But yeah, I did it too. I did it years ago. I made my daughter a um, art cake with splatter paint and it was all buttercream. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I will use my royal icing and squirt it on. And it was like, it was beautiful. And I was like, oh, this cake is like awesome. And then, then we got to like the party and I'm like, why is, why is it like, like drizzling down and it's like leaving the cake and it's puddling and pooling. And then I learned it's because buttercream and royal icing are not friends at all. And it will eat away, the royal icing will eat away at the butter in the buttercream. I do not know if you can do it on Crisco based icings. I just know you can do royal on fondant with no problem. But I've also done this, you know, when you've covered your cake in fondant, and you want to do like that perfect bead and you're like, oh, I'll do it in Royal. And then you have one touch of your buttercream coming out from under your steam. It finds the Royal and you're screwed. I've done that as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I've done that. Okay. So let's see. We've remelted to get this drippy drip. Is any have, has, have you guys done a drip cake? At all? I have, um, but only with the bottle and with with a spoon. I've never tried it with a piping bag. Anyone else ever do this? I've done it with. So far, I've done a drip with buttercream. I've done ganache. I actually just did the ratio and I blasted it in the microwave for a couple seconds, like together, the creamy and the chocolate. Blasted it in the microwave. Yes. So easy and beautiful. Um, it is I so easy. Really, I, would have I really to like you. candy melts. Like I really like candy melts. Everybody, mm -hmm. them, but I really like candy melts because of the variety of colors that yes. are there for me. Oh, I totally agree. And I just use a spoon. That's. I feel like I can control it best with a spoon. See, that's the thing. It's kind of just whatever what works for everyone. You know what I mean? It's like you just you know. What works for one person might not work for another. Everyone has their tricks. Like I know there's a couple people who I've seen are just like die hard. Like they have them all set in their in their um, containers and stuff like that. I've also seen the buttercream in the can where they've taken just like the canned frosting, microwaved it, and done it. And they say that that is like fantastic. I've never done it, but I tried that tight. and it was really it was way too thick. It was like having a colder, a thicker ganache. But then I saw somebody else say that she added a little water to thin it. And that mm -hmm. does help a lot. But like with the candy melt, I don't know. I just, I feel like you can get the thinner, more perfect versus the really good. Why do you have issues melting chocolate if you're fine with candy melt? Because <laughs> candy melt, you just put a little water and put it in the microwave and it's done. Then, <laughs> chocolate hates me. <laughs> oh my gosh. This girl and her chocolate issues. Well, but as you see, like chocolate doesn't, it's not, she's not behaving tonight for me. I mean, she's melting. The problem is, is she's not like fully, I probably can still drip her. But I personally like my cake really, really cold. Um, I find, I personally find that when my cake is really cold, which so we'll let this sit for like two minutes, but I'll put this in the freezer. But when I find when it's really cold, it helps stop your drips, it, especially with your with chocolate. It cools your chocolate pretty instantly. So, yes, but it's all, it's all something. Okay. Oh, let's see. Let's see. We're close. I mean, look at the shine. It is shiny. I've also done it just regular chocolate and you can do it really super thin when I want just like streaks on it, the cake. But 
What? Okay. We can just make this work. What? Chocolate question. So when you yeah. did, I don't know if everybody else saw her cupcakes with the meringue on top with dipped in chocolate. So you added oil to the chocolate, but what was? Yes. What kind of oil? I added uh, vegetable oil, but I've also added canola. Either one of those. And somebody said in the group, they said they did coconut and it worked perfectly. Just don't use olive oil. I mean, you don't wanna make pasta. Okay. We're just gonna go with it. We're gonna go with it. Um, okay, so I will just go with it and put my bag in here. And because I have some, oh yeah, see, oh, here we go. We're good. But you, did you see a couple of those like big chunks? Ah, screw it. We don't want to even pick those ones up. Let me get a spoon now. That way I won't even touch them. Perfect. Okay. See? Oh, we're good. Except for some chunks. If I had a microwave, I'll be honest with you, um, I would be able, I would just, I would just throw it in the microwave for like 20 seconds. But my microwave's in the other room. <laughs> so we won't do that. We will like just MacGyver it. But as you saw, it made beautiful ganache ganache, like ready to ice your cake ganache. Does anybody work with the ganache to ice their cake? No, yes, no. No, but you could do a class on that because that looks like a nightmare. <laughs> it looks like a nightmare. I, I love that. All right, so this is, again, remember, it's not hot. So you're not gonna burn yourself, right? Okay. Um, my nifty thing is, okay, let me get the cake. All right, so here she is. Okay, she's good. She'll be fine. She'll power through it. All right, so again, no different. I mean, I cut a small hole just because the smaller you have, the more control you have, unlike me. Okay, and you just wanna sit at the top and you just wanna nudge your little friend over the, over the rainbow. And it, when you want it to drip more, you just nudge her more. And you're like, come on, go. If you want the longer drip, you just add a little more chocolate while you're sitting here. I have a confession to make. Make a confession. Oh, look how gorgeous. Okay, make a confession. All right. My confession is that I've taken every single class you've offered so far. Yes. The only things I've done are a cake pop and the chocolate covered strawberries. I have yet to bake a cake and try to decorate it. Okay, do you want to hear my confession? Sure. Okay. So have you ever heard of Blueprint or Craftsy? No. Well, there, okay, so I would say back in 2015, Craftsy was really, really, really big. And, oh, I'll talk to you while I'm doing this. Okay, so when you want to fill in, like, let's say you wanted the top, you just, you just kind of mush it together. But make sure you're not going too near the edge so that you don't have a go. Anyway, so they were really huge, and they would do online classes. And... Um, all these like videos and stuff like that. Like some of their videos were like three, four, six hour videos and such. I was like the other day, I was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder what classes are on Blueprint. Cause it's now changed names. I have 58 classes I bought in 2016 and 17 and I've never watched. So I'm right there with you. <laughs> right there with you. But I, at least, at least you watched. I didn't even watch yet. <laughs> I think we should have a class of um, some of our um, 
members doing, replicating what Melissa has taught them. Like Karen could do it and we could all watch and be there with her. I think it's a great idea. So that is your drip cake. Really not hard. And look, watch that, watch that, folks. And no cleanup. That's the way to do it. Just like that. Because now I'm not sitting there messing with a bottle. Look how cute. Ta da! But I'm not messing with a bottle. I'm not trying to clean it. You can absolutely do it with a spoon as well. It is super, super easy. It's not a big deal either. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty basic, but it's super fun and you can do them in a whole de bunch of different ways. You, put, you can put stuff on it, you know, like add candy and stuff. I had my candy somewhere. I was gonna like put Twix bars and things like that, but all right, does anyone have any more questions? I think this was like my best timed class ever. All right, Christy, what are our next classes we have? I, I don't remember. We, remember? Ha we have, um, I don't remember the order, but we have okay. the pleated cake. Right. We have... The, oh, we have the we have the writing class. The I think writing the next class, class is, the, is the 15th is the writing class. Mm -hmm. The 22nd is the edible images and the 29th is the pleated project. No, no, we switched yeah. the edible images to the number cake. Oh, the number cake. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. okay. Gonna... It's some order. So yeah. if you have purchased the membership, which, oh my gosh, we are so blown away on how many members have joined. It is honestly like heartwarming. But of course, if you have paid for the membership, all your classes in April are included as well as everything else. If you have it, definitely consider it because you know you love to hang with us. Um, and, and, and you definitely don't have to. I mean, if you only like of the classes coming up, you're like, you know what? I'm really only interested in one or two, then go for the one or two. You know, don't ever feel, Christy and I are never here for the pressure. The only reason why we brought up this whole membership was because we had so many people who were buying all four classes and we were like, you know what? There has to be a way that we can offer them a discount so that they can still have all of them and we can show them how much we value them and that's how the membership started. So that way they can get everything but be discounted. And so that's why these membership is completely cancelable. There's no contract. It's nothing like that. It's honestly all it is. We want you to have all four classes and not have to pay for all four. So that's why we started it. Um, but I had so much fun with you guys. I know Christy did too. She loves it. Um, I know we're going to have a live next week. I just have no idea what it is yet. I have to think of something. But I hope that you guys are great. If there's any questions you have, put them in, you know, message me, put them in the group, whatever. I'm always here to help. If you get stumped on anything, reach out. Don't hesitate for your crisis calls. I love them all, especially when Courtney messages me. It's my favorite. She'll be like, oh, I need to talk to you. And I'm like, I'm here, girl. I'm here. Hey, Melissa, I did a poll yes. for next week. Um, I'm not yes. sure if you saw it, but between the cookie cake and the chocolate oh, right. cake. That's I'm right. Not, so I think not, we're doing the cookie cake is what I think we're doing. It hasn't, I, I, I haven't looked at the results in a little bit. I don't know. Well, I think the reason why they went to the cookie cake was because there's so many people that I guess maybe don't know how to do a cookie cake, but I think they like the buttercream flowers on top. And so I think that's what kind of pushed it over the edge. I don't know. But that just means I can just, you know, maybe I'll just throw the members only the checkerboard cake. So we'll do something like that, just so our checkerboard, the little fella doesn't get left out. Sound good? Yes. All right. I had a great time with you guys. I hope you guys did too. Happy baking. Karen, try some stuff. Try it. I'll try. Okay. Perfect. All right, you guys. Have a good night. I will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.